Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoterica and our side series on a technicality. Take a look at my Neo Geo AES stick right here, and what we're going to be doing is modding it so that you can put some Sanwa buttons in, as the A button is intermittently not working. The micro switches are decades old, so it's definitely time for a refurb on this stick. So taking a look at the back, there are five screws that you need to remove before you can get inside and four are underneath those little rubber pads. At this point in time, they're degraded so much they're just ripping apart and flaking, so I will replace those after I'm done with the project. But once you get all five screws removed, you're able to open up at the back of that stick and get to all the different internals inside that we're going to be working on to get those Sanwa buttons installed. You'll see here that there is this PCB, and that won't be essential for a modification, but you have buttons D, C, B, and A, as well as a brown ground for the system, and a black ground chain going between the start and select, the buttons, and the stick itself. I like to take a photo when I'm working, that way when I have to put the wires back in line, I know exactly where they go. But you'll see here when we use our multimeter, we're going to check and we're going to see that there is a common ground between start and select, between the buttons, and between the stick itself. And we will maintain that common ground when we put those Sanwa buttons in. But that's basically how it works. If you hold down a button and go from ground and the signal, it will have continuity, so we know that's working perfectly fine. But to remove the wires, what you actually want to do is add some solder to the pad, since that solder is so old. If you just heat it up and kind of combine those together, you're going to have a lot easier time pulling the leads out from their pads. You could cut them, but honestly, it just seemed easier to desolder them because I may use this board in a future video. But what you'll see right here is you come in with that fresh solder and you just put your iron on it, you heat the pad up, and all those different leads are going to pop out very easily. Like I said, just add more solder. It's going to be easier to get everything reflowed if you do it in that method. Method. And you'll see here, we'll just pop those two grounds out, and then this board will be completely void of any sort of wires, and then we can just come in with a screwdriver and remove it, because like I said, this is a component that you're not going to need for the modification. So we sped it up, you're just going to see me pop these four screws out right here, and then when we remove that PCB board, we're going to have access to all four holes to pop the buttons into. When you are popping the buttons in, you do kind of want to make sure that the posts are all in the same orientation. It's going to make it easier for you to work moving forward. It's kind of signal agnostic. There is no 5 volt or ground on the buttons. As long as one lead is ground and one lead is 5 volt, you're going to be perfectly fine in whatever configuration you put them in. But when you keep those terminals in line, it will make it easier for you when you're working on the back. I was going to use quick disconnects on these buttons, but due to the height of the AES stick, it didn't fit. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to braid the two ground chains together, one from the start and select board and one from the joystick, and I'm just going to add a little bit of solder so that those are soldered together and are going to stay as one unit. And we'll have to make a third ground chain from the buttons. But coming in, just checking my work to make sure everything's good, we have continuity between the start and select ground and the joystick ground, so we know that all that solder is good. So I just take a little bit of black wire here for ground, black's going to be the common color, and I just measure across all four posts. I don't want to leave myself too short of wire, but I also want to leave enough to work with, that way I can make my ground chain across those four buttons. So now that we have our length of wire, we're just going to come in and I'm going to solder that first bit to button D, and then what I'm going to need to do is remove some of the plastic sheathing in each spot that I need to solder. I use a lighter and literally just melt it back. You can use strippers and kind of move it around, but honestly, this is the most effective for me. I like it. And then I'll just go ahead and come in and solder the next bit of wire onto button C and start building that ground chain. And you'll see here that the ground chain is completed. It's on button D, C, B, and A. And then I'll just tin up the wire from there and I'll marry it to that ground chain that I had earlier. So now all three of the grounds are connected. We come in with the multimeter from start and select. We have it on D. And then from D, we also have it on the joystick. Once I actually get the probe in there, there's a lot of wires that you have to deal with going all over the place. But our ground chain's complete, and we're ready to move on to the next step. So we're reconnecting all the wires. I just take a look at that photo, and I see exactly what color wires need to go to what button. That way, I don't end up making B, D, or A, C, because that would get really confusing very quickly. But I'll just come in and I will tin all four posts with some solder. That way when I put the wires against them, they are ready just to marry together. You don't need to use a ton. You just need to make sure that that hole is pretty much filled so that when you do come in with the iron, there's enough solder there that that wire will attach perfectly fine. And just make sure you move your cables out of the way. You don't want to inadvertently hit one with a soldering iron and break something or melt something that you didn't mean to use. Some people use their soldering iron to melt back the insulation on the wires, and I find it just makes it a little dirty, so I use the lighter method. But now that we've attached the D leads, the orange and the green, we're going to go down the line and put everything else back together. 
And now I'll just put a little bit of heat shrink tubing over our ground chain. I don't want it to touch anything. I doubt it would, but the easiest way to insulate it is to just make sure that you wrap it with some heat shrink tubing so that it can't connect to anything. And then from there, I'll just go ahead and check my ground chain one last time and I'll see that all the way around the board, I have continuity on ground, so those buttons will work perfectly fine. Putting the ball top on, you can loosen it from the underside of that flathead screwdriver bit underneath the stick, but mine was loose enough that I just did it this way. The balls like to crack. Unfortunately, just over time, use sweat in your hands, they crack. So I just pop that ball right on top and we have a fully modified Neo Geo fight stick. I tested it off screen. It's good to go. But thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, leave them down below. Otherwise, we will see you next time. You guys have a great weekend. Bye bye.